Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio tutorial. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me. Today is going to be a little bit of a different tutorial. I'm going to be giving you five ways to increase your game performance or reduce lag in your game. Now, there's just a few quick disclaimers or clarifications I want to make before we get into this. Uh, first of all, many of you, if you're, if you're newer to the game, you may have smaller bases and such, and this may not apply to you yet. So... Uh, you know, keep it in mind or whatever, or if you are having lag issues, you know, maybe you've just built a big base, then these things maybe can help you. The second thing, just really quickly, I want to touch on is, I think the saying, don't kill the messenger, uh, cut comes in quite nicely here, because a lot of these things are going to be controversial, not in the fact that they're true or not, but in the fact that a lot of people uh, like doing some of these things that I'm going to tell you are actually bad for your performance. Uh, so I'm not telling you how to play the game. Um, I just want to make it, you know, clear that I'm simply presenting the information to you. And it is up to you whether you want to use it or not. I'm tell not telling you you need to or not whatever. Um, I'm just giving it out, giving it to you. So the first one is very simple, right? Uh, if you're having some issues with, you know, FPS, uh, this would probably affect more FPS than UPS. Uh, but if you're having issues with that, then one thing you can do, which is the simplest of these, is just go into Options, go into Graphics, and turn off Smoke and Clouds. Um, really, you won't notice much of a difference at all visually, like for yourself, uh, except when you're by like Steam Engines or whatever, uh, they won't be putting out smoke like they normally do. Um, but these two things can actually impact your game performance simply just because it's more stuff to load and you know more stuff to show. So that's number one. Number two is using solar rather than steam power. Now, again, I'm not telling you that you have to use solar instead of steam. I'm simply telling you that in terms of uh, pure game performance and reducing lag, that solar is better than steam in that sense. And why is this? Uh, that's because solar actually, as of a update quite a while ago, but this has certainly not always been the case, um, solar acts differently than steam in the fact that solar actually groups itself together um, whereas steam the game has to calculate like each entity I actually have a Friday facts here where they talked about it and I'll link it in the description for anyone interested um, but Friday facts 84 says optimizations of the electric network the solar panels and accumulators are now merged into the electric network so they don't have to be simulated individually the electric network distribution calculations are also heavily simplified by this that basically means that the amount of solar slash accumulators have no effect on the speed of the factory update times anymore. So you could have tens of thousands of solar panels and accumulators, and it wouldn't really affect your game performance. Whereas with Steam, that's not the case. It has to calculate each entity and each thing that's going on with, with each uh, engine and all that. So that's the reason for that. Now, of course, like I said, you know, if you're into doing Steam, go for it. If your base is smaller and stuff, you know, a lot of these things uh, you, you may not be a, a, a experiencing, as I try to find the words, you may not be experiencing lag issues or performance issues at all. But for the future, uh, keep these things in mind. And if you are, you know, if you're building mega bases or something, for some reason don't know some of these, they can hopefully be helpful. So number three is using robots instead of belts. This is one that I think is more widely known than the solar and steam one, and one that I think is very controversial in terms of what people want to do. Uh, in terms of if it's true or not, it it is. Robots are far more performance efficient and less lag inducing than belts. And why is this? It's because belts, um, now they have optimized them, right? Quite a while ago, the belts were actually just like terrible for lag. Um, they did make them a bit better, but the thing is the belts still do collision checks, right? So the belts, if I have belts here, um, and I'm on our Earth map here uh, series because this is a good example. Um, belts, right, you have items on them, they constantly have to do collision checks with the items and other things and such. So this is constantly happening like behind the scenes and taking up game calculations. Whereas robots do not. They just pretty much just pass over or through everything. Um, they don't do collision checks. So really the only thing the robots are going to impact is like your FPS if you just have huge amounts of them. And I mean, once you get, there's people who have done, you know, like, 100, 200,000 robots, and then it starts impacting stuff, but I mean, that's pretty obvious hit those numbers. Um, but you can see, like this base, right? We don't have belt. We do not have belt. 
anywhere. This is actually our oil base, but this is our main base. We don't have belt anywhere. Everything is robot based. All our mining outposts are robot mining. And um, things are kind of shut down now, but this base can produce, I mean, kind of shut down. Producing 18,000 iron a minute, 11,000 copper a minute. These can actually probably go into about the 20,000 a minute mark. Same with this stuff. And I'm experiencing no lag while recording either. Um, and, and it's if all this were belt, right, if we had an equal amount of production, but using belts instead of bots, I guarantee you I would be having performance issues both in FPS and UPS simply due to those collision checks and calculations. So there's that. Second or fourth one is concrete. Concrete um, can increase lag. Um, not itself, like the concrete itself being there doesn't create lag, but what it allows to happen creates lag. So if you didn't know, different surfaces like different like desert or tundra or for or uh, you know whatever you have here and water and concrete all have different absorption amounts for pollution okay and i have a thing here which i'll link as well to it's a wiki page and it shows um the different tiles there's actually quite a lot of them um the pollution they absorb per tick or per second um that shows both here um the best is actually these actually aren't arranged in terms of best or worst um, but it looks like the best you know is gonna be like the the grassy areas and such uh, and then desert is really bad for absorbing pollution stone floor and concrete is zero it does not absorb pollution and what this means is pollution then travels extremely quickly and spreads extremely quickly on concrete now obviously <laughs> this is a bad example we're just a super pollution heavy map but um, part of it is we're on desert but the thing is with concrete right it has no pollution absorption so it makes your pollution spread a lot quicker and you may be thinking well why is this bad for lag because pollution keeps chunks active anywhere pollution is or pollution is spreading to keeps those chunks active and chunks are these things right here these uh big black squares right if there's pollution in any of these they're active even if you're not here if uh there's no buildings i mean this is a good example look Huh, interesting. It follows exactly our pollution line. These are all active chunks. These little uh, purple things, pink things. I mean, you can see my FPS is horrible, but this is everywhere our pollution is, right? And past it, because this is our bad pollution. It's actually spread way down here. So this keeps chunks active. Keeping chunks active, chunks active, if I can talk, is uh, obviously creates more calculations and more things that have to be updated and going on in the game. And on top of that, if there's biters in those chunks that are active, the biters' uh, movement creates a ton of lag. Um, it's not contrary to popular belief, but the devs actually confirmed this to uh, some people and myself that it's not the biter pathfinding that's the issue. It's the biter like movement itself and like collision checks that cause the issues, right? So if you like go into combat or something in multiplayer, you may notice performance drops. Well, the same thing's happening if they're active. If, if chunk is active where there's biters, same thing. So that's why concrete's bad. And lastly, train loops. <laughs> I know people are not going to like this one. Again, I'm not telling you not to build loops. I'm simply telling you the fact that they are worse for performance, whether you care or not. Um, train loops. So like our system here, this is not a loop system. We have two-headed trains. They go into a station. They pull out. Um, we don't have really roundabouts-ish. Um, we have like junctions, but it's not really a roundabout. You can see there's no loops here. None of this, none of this loops back on itself. And train loops are bad um, per performance-wise compared to just this type of system because it requires a train, right? The train has to, to calculate a path every time it needs to go somewhere. Um, it requires it to calculate a lot more of that than using this type of system we have here because you're looping, right? So there's an extra track, essentially. So for example, like we have a track here. Let's just say hypothetically that there's a station here. Um, and, and this is obviously a tiny scale, but there's a station here and there's a station here. The train literally just has to go, okay, well, here's my path. And even if you have like junctions coming off, right? It's still the same, you know, it still only has to kind of check like just a single direction, if you will. I mean, these directions too. But if you compare that to like a loop, which I don't even think I can fit here. 
right? If you compare this to a loop system, and you have a train, like, come in or whatever, this thing has to check the entire loop. In this, this means the entire system, right? If your entire system is a loop based system, it is checking like double, right? It's checking both like ways all the time in, in, in your entire train system pretty much or anywhere that um, involves where it needs to go. And this can actually make an impact. Um, if you're not, again, if you're using a smaller base, you won't really notice it. If you're on a mega base and you're doing loops, you will notice it. If you have huge train systems like we do, if this were a loop, uh, we would be noticing it. So there you go, guys. I know a little longer than a lot of the tutorials, but I, I find it really important to explain the reasoning behind stuff. I could have just said, you know, turn off smoke and clouds. Solar's better than steam. Robots better than belts. Don't do concrete. Don't do train loops. Period. Um, but that doesn't tell you why. And I want to go into the why behind it because then you can actually understand it and for yourself, and then decide maybe more have a more educated decision as to you know if you want to do it or not. So there you go guys. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you did find this helpful and learned something new. If you did, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. And uh, I'd love to hear your feedback down in the comments. If I got anything uh, wrong, I, I don't think I did. Hopefully not. If I did, um, let me know if there's you know other things that, that you know of that can really reduce uh, lag and increase performance. Let me know on that as well. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.